Here are seven of the weirdest events that ever happened in the past. If you like history and if you like weird, then this is the video for you. Let's get into it. Number seven, when the Nazis fought the Nazis, the battle for Castle Itter. Castle Itter is a small fortification in Austria. It was used by the SS during the Second World War as a prison for high profile detainees. And it was also the site of one of the most curious battles of the conflict. On the 6th of May, 1945, peace was on the horizon and the Third Reich was collapsing. The German commander of the prison, who was also the commander of the concentration camp Dachau, killed himself. And some of the Waffen SS soldiers were retreating. Whilst this was happening, one of the prisoners escaped and went looking for some allied forces to help release the other prisoners. He managed to find an American armoured column and got them to come with him. At the same time, Major Joseph Gangl, an Austrian in the German army, had decided to surrender with his men to the Americans. With the arrival of the escaped prisoner, a strange agreement would take place. The Major and his German troops would fight alongside the American forces against the SS guards. The resulting battle of Castle Itter was hardly pivotal, but the SS faced not only their fellow countrymen and the Americans with a Sherman tank, but there were also Austrian partisans and French prisoners joining in. It was a wonderful symbol of the unifying effect the Allies had compared to the polarizing forces of the Nazis. The battle may not have been big, about 100 men were involved, but it was vicious. The Sherman tank was destroyed and Major Joseph Gangl was killed by a sniper. It was, however, the only time in the entire war that the American army fought alongside the German army. The SS were defeated and surrendered and the rest of the prisoners were released unharmed. Number six, the Dancing Plague. Also known as St. Vitus's Dance, Choreomania was a bizarre medieval phenomenon that struck Central Europe. It involved spontaneous and continuous dancing from crowds of people until they collapsed from exhaustion or eventually died. As bizarre as it sounds, Choreomania was regularly reported by eyewitnesses and it was a genuine concern for the authorities. It also seems to have been contagious. For example, in June 1374, one of the most major outbreaks began in Aachen, Germany, before spraying to other places such as Cologne, Flanders, Utrecht, and eventually Italy. And there were still more outbreaks over a century later. In Strasbourg in July 1518, a woman began dancing in the street, and within four days, 33 others had joined her, and within a month, 400 more many of whom suffered heart attacks and died. Because no autopsies were carried out and because medical science of the day was pretty unadvanced, only guesses could be made as to what caused this. Perhaps it was some kind of skin infection or muscular inflammation that led to spasms. Nobody knows, but at the time people thought it was a curse brought about by Saint Vitus. So they responded by praying and making pilgrimages to places dedicated to Vitus. The subsequent recovery of some victims bolstered the claims that there was a connection between the illness and the saint. Number five, Miss Unsinkable. Violet Jessup. Violet Jessup was a stewardess aboard the RMS Olympic, one of the Titanic's sister ships, which collided with another ship in September 1911. The Olympic was very badly damaged, but somehow it managed to get its way back to port safely and everyone survived. Less than six months later, Jessup was aboard the Titanic, again as a stewardess, when it tragically sank. But again, she survived. After that, Jessup became a stewardess for the British Red Cross and served aboard the HMS Britannic during the First World War. Unfortunately, this boat also sank after an unexplained experience explosion, thought to be a sea mine, caused it to quickly plunge to the depths of the ocean. Jessup had to jump out of the lifeboat she was in to avoid being sucked under the ship's hull as it went under, and she suffered a serious head injury in the process. But somehow, she survived again, for a third time. Despite all of this, she returned to work at the same shipping company four years later. Number four, Caligula made his horse a priest. It's no secret that the Roman Emperor Caligula was a complete ruthless nutcase. According to the ancient historian Suetonius, Caligula loved horses more than he loved people, and a horse called Incatatus was by far his favorite. He loved Incatatus so much that he gave the steed a marble stool, an ivory manger, a jeweled collar, and even a house. Another writer, Cassius Dio, wrote that servants fed Incatatus with oat mixed with gold flakes. Remember, this was a time when the poor were starving in the streets. At some point, even this wasn't enough for Caligula, and he he tried to make his horse a senator of Rome, but when this failed, he had to settle for making it a priest instead. Number three, two Soviets saved the world. The first incident was in 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Soviet Vice Admiral Vasily Arkhipov was on board a nuclear submarine near Cuba. The crew were unable to pick up any incoming radio signals, so they thought perhaps nuclear war had broken out. Because of this, they had a vote on board on whether to launch the nuclear missiles that they had, and Arkhipov was the only one that voted no. 
This boat undoubtedly stopped a nuclear war. Remarkably, a very similar incident happened again. In 1983, a single Soviet Lieutenant Colonel by the name of Stanislas Yegrafovich Petrov avoided nuclear war by correctly identifying a false alarm within the Soviet missile detection system. A freak occurrence involving sunlight reflecting off high altitude clouds had completely confused their satellite system causing it to indicate that there were five incoming missiles assumed to be American. Petrov reasoned that if the US was starting a nuclear war, it would be a bit weird to only send five missiles. So he correctly, and directly against military orders, assumed it to be a false alarm. This prevented a retaliatory launch by the USSR, and almost certainly, nuclear war. Number two, Unsinkable Sam. Unsinkable Sam was the nickname given to this cat, who was actually called Oscar. He started off as the ship's cat on the Nazi ship, the Bismarck, which was sunk by the British ship HMS Kozak in 1941. The British crew found the cat somehow floating on a piece of wood hours after the ship had sunk, so they took him aboard and named him Oscar. However, later in the war, HMS Kozak was hit by a torpedo and also sunk, killing 159 crew members. Oscar, though, survived again, was rescued again, and was given the nickname Unsinkable Sam. His last service was aboard the HMS Ark Royal, an aircraft carrier that was also torpedoed, this time by a Nazi U-boat. But of course, Oscar remarkably survived that attack as well. After the war, he retired to Belfast where he lived in a seaman's home, and he died in 1955, a full 14 years after the Bismarck sank. Number one, Pepsi Army. Now, I couldn't make this one up if I tried. During the late 1980s, the Soviet Union's love of Pepsi proved to be a bit problematic. Their initial agreement with the American company had expired and their currency wouldn't be accepted. So they decided to do a trade. 17 submarines and several other naval vessels in exchange for $3 billion worth of Pepsi. Now, while Pepsi soon sold this newfound fleet to a Swedish company who scrapped it, for a brief window, Pepsi had more military might than all but five countries on Earth. They could have turned their cola wars with Coca-Cola into a real-life war, and they probably would have won. 